So for our final presentation of today, Colin will be talking about the uh, MySQL database ecosystem. Please welcome Colin. Thank you, Rich. Hello, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about the MySQL database ecosystem uh, this year. It's do all of you use MySQL? Yeah. <laughs> no, the rest of you are like, uh, <laughs> okay. On occasion. On occasion, okay. So uh, we have 45 minutes, and I actually have 64 slides, so we're going to go fairly quick. You can find out more about me on the internet. Um, most importantly, MySQL has been around for a long time. Oh, and of course, full, full disclaimer. Yes, I work at Percona. I also hack on MariaDB Sava, which is owned by a foundation and a corporation, and I own shares in the corporation. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I'm going to be as neutral as possible, obviously. <laughs> MySQL, 23 years old. The, I worked there for a long time. The only thing that does not, I've never worked in Oracle, that's the only, only thing, but at Sun as well. Percona Server, also going to be 10 years. It's a little over nine years now. MariaDB actually just celebrated its eighth birthday. First release was uh, February 2010, first February 2010. Drizzle is something that was a potentially interesting topic. Uh, database with a more microkernel. That was promised, but it, it has died. And one of, the re one of the takeaways from that is you should never use open source projects that come from one company. So Drizzle was uh, something that you ended up, everybody ended up working at Rackspace. Rackspace said, hey, we're not so interested in this Drizzle thing any longer. Why don't you go work on OpenStack? Drizzle died. And then there's this thing called WebScale SQL, which uh, is a consortium of, of people, uh, companies really, Facebook, Google, and a whole bunch of others saying that they like to have a, a, a sort of a base. Unfortunately, that base uh, never really progressed. And a lot of the features went into both Pocono server as well as MariaDB. So, Again, history is maybe not, not too interesting, uh, so we'll also skip through this a little faster. Uh, Unireg, for example, was when um, my, MySQL actually sort of really started because it was a text user interface to an ISM data store. Rows were written to the disk, and then you had indexes on top of that. And then in 1986, Monty made these things called FRM files, which are forms to enter the data. And uh, FRM files are going away in MySQL 8 they will be replaced by SDI files. Uh, so, uh, so FRM has been around since 86 and are you know, going away some 30 years later. And um, MSQL was Monty's effort to uh, plug ISAM data store to MSQL. And uh, I think the most interesting thing here is that statement-based replication came to MySQL in uh, May 2000. And uh, you know, our friends at Postgres are literally next door. And out of the box replication for Postgres only arrived in September 2010. It took, I mean, you could have Sloney, you could install a whole bunch of other things by yourself, but out of the box replication took literally 10 years to come. And uh, InnoDB was, of course, what made MySQL MySQL, what makes it popular, um, because this was the storage engine that had transactions, uh, NVCC. It was what made MySQL not a toy database. Because my eyes are fast, yes, but you know, it could crash and you just lose data. MySQL, also interestingly enough, was probably the first um, test of the GPL in the courts because uh, MySQL and NewSphere had um, a court uh, proceeding and the, it turned out the GPL was actually enforceable and Gemini eventually had to abandon NewSphere. Once you take venture capital money, you tend to invest heavily in engineering. And also there was this thing called NDB cluster, which is acquired. So first acquisition, and uh, this is a shared nothing architecture, fully in-memory database. But imagine in 2003 you acquire a fully in-memory database. We weren't even we weren't even thinking about 64 bit then. Still 32 bit, and you're addressing no more than four gigs of RAM. So this was not very popular except for the telco space because they could afford lots more RAM. But normal human beings like you and me probably couldn't. And uh, till today, it's used very commonly in home, home location recorder um, stuff for your cell phones. So every time you move cells, it's actually stored usually in NDB cluster. Um, of course, nowadays NDB cluster also supports on disk, but I'm going to guess 
generally, most people don't use this. It's, it is sort of a separate product of MySQL. It is open source. It's very hard to manage. So upgrading it takes like 50 commands, unless you buy a, a GUI that Oracle sells or third-party people sell. And uh, this is not this is the non-common MySQL, but it does exist for sure. Um, Another thing that was interesting with MySQL and getting lots of money was uh, if you were part of the external community, if you wrote a patch or you wrote some connector, you got hired. Um, this was a big big deal then for us when Oracle acquired Innovase. But I guess it goes to show that it doesn't matter that Oracle acquired Innovase in 2005 because we're, we're here in 2018 and Oracle is still releasing MySQL and actually investing in MySQL. They have a big MySQL day at the ICAM Center, so not quite the Marriott, but still. <laughs> the Maria project uh, started actually in 2005, largely as a response to Oracle acquiring Innovase. And uh, naturally, we thought we needed an alternative to InnoDB in case Oracle would not let us use it. In fact, the way InnoDB was developed was such that Oracle would develop it, and every month they'll give us a, a source code drop and said, here, please integrate this. So that was not quite open source development, but we, we could not really argue because, hey, you kind of needed InnoDB, and the only other alternative was MyZen. We also acquired another thing called Falcon. So Falcon is now dead, but we did acquire Falcon. Um, and it was written by a guy called Jim Stocky, who was the creator of database blobs and MVCC2. And that was also meant to solve the InnoDB problem. So we wanted to parallelize the problem, get Falcon, create Maria as an engine. Um, then, you know, we encouraged other people to write pluggable storage engines as well. So PVXT was written by a, a company in Germany called the Team Drive. And it was actually at that point in time the only database out there that supported multiple storage engines. And many things can make engines different, right? So how you store it on disk or over the network, what kind of indexes you use, are you using, uh, you know, B trees, hash indexes. Does it have, um, you know, GIS uh, functionality because you need R3 indexes and InnoDB only got that fairly recently in uh, late 2015. And uh, of course, uh, full text search was also engine dependent. So a whole bunch of things that were different. So writing a storage engine for MySQL is actually much harder than writing a storage engine for MongoDB. And MongoDB is the other one that recently, maybe three years now, got storage engine. <coughs> so we're supposed to IPO. That never happened because Sun paid a billion dollars for us about 10 years ago. A billion was quite a lot 10 years ago. Today, it's probably laughable. So, <laughs> how times change. Um, Petrona Server actually came out in uh, November of 2008, uh, and Flickr was one of the first people to upgrade to Petrona Server. It was actually called a Petrona patch set, and uh, they, they showed how they actually got the InnoDB pending uh, AIO reads down tremendously with these high performance patches. And Procona wasn't inventing these patches, right? These patches came out of Google, they came out of Facebook, they were just integrated uh, into a uh, distribution of sorts. I mean, that's how the, the sort of thing started. Um, in February of 2009, Monty then decided to leave Sun. Uh, and a couple months later, Oracle decided to acquire Sun. And shortly thereafter, I left Sun to join Monty to start something new. So we did, you know, MariaDB. We made a whole bunch of releases. Our initial goal was to get you going, like a Linux distribution. We wanted to make six month releases. But then we realized very quickly that if we followed like the Fedora or Ubuntu release model for a database, it's actually quite hard because we'd have to also maintain it for very long periods of time, like typically five years would be the maintenance and Fedora and Ubuntu uh, don't maintain it for five years. So then we realized maybe that would not be the best model, so we can't really follow uh, the next distribution. So we only managed one release with a very short time frame. First, we started diverging, uh, but still trying to rebase. And uh, that actually goes to show that it took us uh, 16 months to make a rebase of MySQL 5.5 and MariaDB 5.5, those 16 month delta. And that's when we realized rebasing would be unsustainable, so we'd have to start cherry picking. And at some stage, cherry picking wouldn't work either, so it sort of eventually became more, more of a, a, a fork instead of a branch. 
so this is what's happened uh, most recently, uh, right up until um, 2016, where you start actually getting MySQL 5.7. So we should really only be focusing today on MySQL 5.7, MariaDB 10.1 slash 10.2, and um, Chrono Server 5.7, and of course what comes in the future. In terms of uh, open source community, um, I think MariaDB does the best job because you can actually be an external committer and contributor. You can sign the MariaDB contributor agreement, which is very similar to the old Sun CLA, uh, or you could uh, submit your code with BSD new, and uh, then you don't sign any contributor agreement. Oracle requires you to actually sign a contributor agreement as well, the OCA. And this, I believe, has uh, some uh, corporations have issues signing it, or they don't like to sign it. And in very um, minor um, exemptions, they actually also accept code with an exemption without uh, signing the OCA. But I think the most important thing is, of course, who maintains the code. So if you contribute something, is it actually being maintained? And what is the state of community contributed code? Uh, Percona, we, we, we love your bug reports, but we don't accept comments either. So we're also so, so, sort of moving to becoming more open. For example, we only just, in the last month, ditched Launchpad for Jira. Not that Jira is more open, but Launchpad's kind of, I don't know, not, not being worked on. In terms of security, and I think that's one of the reasons why MariaDB uh, gets shipped everywhere. Uh, MariaDB actually tells you the CVEs and they link to a CVE <coughs> number and they usually tell you where, where, where the patch is. Percona roughly follows exactly what Oracle does, also takes patches from um, MariaDB. But more interestingly, if you actually look at CVEs and if they have a public bug, uh, there usually is a developer or a QA person that goes to actually point to where the commit is. So there is actually information as to what, C what is actually getting fixed. I think the, the biggest contention for most people is Oracle doesn't like to release uh, information about their, um, their software bugs. And uh, they just tell you every couple of months, here's a critical patch update or CPU, or you wait for the next release, and then they tell you, we fixed it, you should trust us. And the, the work of actually going through uh, the code is actually maybe a little more complex. So it's, it's, it's the environment that we live in. Uh, shipping, working with Oracle, apparently this is true for all software they ship, and it's not just the MySQL problem. Um, people tend to say MySQL is dying. Uh, this is far from true, um, as you know, Mark Twain would say. It's, it's greatly been exaggerated. It's actually never been stronger. It's, um, it's, it still runs pretty much all of the internet that you're familiar with. So if you go to the Alexa top 20, the top 100, you would most likely find MySQL powering it. Oracle actually isn't, isn't bad. They've been a great steward of MySQL. We're getting more new features in MySQL uh, every time they make a release. Uh, external contributions from the people like Google and Facebook are still happening till today. Alibaba has become a, a huge contributor to making MySQL um, better at, at scale. And uh, the shared knowledge, it's, it's all entirely fairly amazing. So, Here's a, a list of features that MySQL 5.7 has that uh, you know, some, even maybe MariaDB may not necessarily have. Uh, for one, multi-source replication allows you to have multiple masters write to a single slave. MariaDB has a limit of 64 masters writing to a single slave. MySQL has a limit of 255 masters writing to a single slave. And I understand that some people don't like using the term master and slave, so you can use um, leader and follower. No, in the MySQL world, that seems to be the term being used. Replication filters are also dynamic, so you can change them. You can uh, filter um, based on, you know, if you don't want any inserts going to a replica, this is perfectly okay. Replica is another good one to use. Semi-sync, lossless semi-sync. So this is actually how people end up doing uh, automated failover with MySQL. So you, have, you need a third-party tool, maybe like MHA or Orchestrator, but if you want to do automatic master failover, to uh, the most current replica. Semi lossless semi-sync is exactly what you need. And this, this is what powers um, you know, your Googles and Facebooks of today. So that if the master does go down, there's always a guarantee that one other um, replica has that commit. And this is, um, this is really what powers stuff without data loss. Huge chunks of GIS functionality. So um, one of the one of the cool things about Postgres is they've always been strong with GIS. MySQL actually got GIS functionality, uh, including GeoJSON functions. So you can actually use 
um, JSON, you, you get queries uh, dumped out to you in JSON format. Um, what, what else is useful? This is useful, resizing the buffer pool online. So without having to restart your server, if you need to grow your buffer pool because you grew your memory in a virtual instance, um, this, this could actually work out really well for you. Uh, this I'll talk a little bit more about later, as well as encryption at rest. Now, I don't know if you have the internet, but if you go to the complete list of features.com, the complete list of features.com, you will see a long list of features. They are about 150 features that are new to MySQL 5.7 that may or may not be in MariaDB. The may not be parts we'll talk about soon. That's not to say MariaDB is, is a slouch. MariaDB has uh, also got interesting features like Galera cluster is integrated so you don't have to download another separate server, which is true when you download for HTTP <coughs> cluster. Encryption is not just for the table space, but also for a, on a per table basis. No, I don't think you should run it in per table basis because that's not very secure. Crown replication tends to be fairly optimistic. The semi-sync replication is not quite lossless. It's enhanced, but not there yet. It'll get there soon. Um, the ability to have a thread pool. Now, the thread pool is useful. If you have a web app and you have uh, short running queries, typically ones that return in less than one second, you want to have the thread pool turned on. And um, the thread pool is available in both MariaDB and Percona server as open source. In MySQL, it's part of the enterprise closed source release. Um, Cracklip password check, in case you want to run against Cracklip, this is vaguely useful. Uh, I wouldn't use the regular expressions, even though they're pro compatible regular expressions. I wouldn't want to do that kind of information like business intelligence inside your database. I think that's better handled in your application. And roles. So roles is something that only comes to MySQL 8, but MariaDB's had it now for quite some time. SQL standard roles. And of course, there's also this thing called Picona Server 5.6 as well as 5.7 for MySQL. Uh, MariaDB right up until 10.1 shipped uh, Percona XDB as the default InnoDB. In 10.2, it switched to InnoDB. Um, controlling uh, new my interleaving so that the, your MySQL server does not use up all its memory and then get the out of memory killer to, to crash it when you have new my interleaving, interleaving nodes. Um, also kind of handy. Uh, restricting your bin log file, so you start up an instance of say uh, 20 gigabytes and you, and, and you set your bin log to rotate every say 1 gigabyte. You want to also make sure that you don't have too many bin log files because your 20 gigabyte instance goes away fairly quickly. Uh, utility user, this, this is largely for OpenStack, so if you go download OpenStack, they tell you you can use Protona server or actually DB cluster, the utility user is useful for that because you have system access for your admin tasks and uh, you don't get access to the user schema. So this actually was not written by Percona for Percona's sake, it was more uh, actually a thanks to you know, HP. Because HP used to run this big OpenStack instance, public instance before they, they shut it down and they wanted this as well. And another good uh, base blog post to read is this one. So I think I also sent it, this was also part of the uh, abstract. So if you have not read it yet, it's, it's probably worth a read. It's a bit long, maybe 10 pages or 12 pages. But it's a higher level overview of what's different with MySQL and MariaDB. So what is compatibility? Um, a state in which two things are able to exist or occur together without problems or conflict. So I guess you, you all know that MySQL and MariaDB use the same data directory, so valid MySQL, use the same port 3306, but can they actually coexist? And it matters because MariaDB server is the default MySQL in pretty much every Linux distribution, including CentOS 7, right? So if you ask for MySQL, you actually end up getting um, MariaDB. And this was probably okay uh, in CentOS 7 where it ships 5.5 uh, as a default and I think via software collections you can get 10.2 now. But um, uh, it is probably not so okay when people say, hey, I want like this JSON functionality or I want this and then they realize this, they're missing features, right? Or I want to use the X protocol, which we'll talk about in a bit. And um, it turns out, maybe we can also learn from the cloud providers. Um, they, like Amazon, offers MySQL and MariaDB because they realized, obviously, it's significantly different. Azure also came out with MariaDB as an offering. They first came out with MySQL and Postgres. 
They've also recently added um, MariaDB as an offering, and Rackspace as well. And lately we've been finding lots of um, incompatibilities. Uh, and those incompatibilities are on, on these slides, but they're definitely not in that blog because they're more low level. So connectors have issues. So um, the connector project had renamed a bunch of files from MySQLH to MariaDBH. So basically MySQL.com uh, header files became MariaDB.com header files. And uh, this actually sort of breaks connectors. Uh, also, uh, we will address SSL later as well, but um, the connector C, which is shipped, uh, it's not exactly compatible with lib MySQL client, lib MariaDB client is not the same as lib MySQL client, and the header changes make a huge difference. So the, this, I think, is uh, very applicable to people who are shipping Linux distributions, because if you end up compiling stuff against MariaDB's connector, you may actually realize that other MySQL stuff will break. So there are verbal commitments, so um, Monty and I, we, we hung out together at the developer meeting and he said I6 should be comparable to 10.1 and 10.2 uh, should be compatible with 5.7 and uh, till today it is referred to as an enhanced drop-in replacement of MySQL um, and that means it's designed to drop in, but you want to drop in and maybe drop out because people like to switch between two sometimes. Licensing-wise, uh, it's worth noting that MySQL is fully GPL v2, and actually everything Oracle has released in the open source world, including the new router and stuff, is also a GPL like v2. They don't seem to come up with some crazy licenses. Um, MariaDB, on the other hand, has actually uh, picked up this thing called the business source license, which is not an open source license, which means you cannot ship this in Fedora or CentOS. So you can't ship MaxScale anymore, because um, that, 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 that was the router. And uh, you can't ship parts of this stuff that, are required, that, that, are, that work with column store as well. And um, what is the business source license? It's uh, basically time-delayed open source, and this is an extract of what the business source license looks like. It's not new. Um, GoScript Aladdin had this um, many, many years ago, in the 90s. And uh, they basically say you could be GPL after a year. And uh, I think at that point in time, even Stallman said, at that point in time, it was, a, it was a good compromise because it gave them free software after a year. But the reality is I don't think um, the mid-90s and, and now are, are the same any longer. So, so this one basically says you can use um, the software with a total of less than three database server instances for production purposes. So if you wanted to start the cluster, you need three database instances. That's your minimum requirement to have a, a cluster uh, with, 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 that uses a quorum-based algorithm. So if you wanted to use a load balancer in front of it, or a router in front of it like MaxScale, you can't without paying a license fee, which is ridiculous. Which is why we have Proxy SQL and Oracle's MySQL router, both of which one could ship in a Linux distribution, because they're one's GPL v3 and the other one's GPL v2. Support. So, who supports what? I'd say pretty much every support provider out there today supports MySQL, MariaDB, Procrona Server, without uh, a doubt. Training, again, uh, oh, yeah, when I say every, every except Oracle, right? So, Oracle will only support MySQL. Um, training, uh, similar, similar deal. Everyone <coughs> seems to now do training for all variants. And uh, Oracle's had MySQL certification for a long time, and lately there's also this thing called MariaDB certification, but uh, there, are not, there are no materials as to what's actually different or changed um, in, in the certification, and you can only do these certifications at the conference. Uh, M17 happened in 2017, M18's happening later this month, and um, there's no registry or anything yet. Governance is also interesting. Um, MariaDB has a corporation and a foundation. Um, they are on their third CEO now, a uh, uh, guy called Michael Howard. They've raised a lot of money, so total funding is now 98.2 million. Um, for context, MySQL never raised more than 40 million. Um, so there is dependence on venture money. Uh, I always like to look at, you know, are you spending money on developers or are you spending money on website changes? And web.archive.org is amazing for that. 
And I think the other important thing to think about is, you know, is there actually vendor lock-in in open source? So in terms of releases, uh, you'll realize that the most current 10.1 and, and 5.7 were released two days apart. So you can basically consider them equivalents. And then 10.2 came out uh, end of May. And uh, it's worth noting that as of today, 10.3.4 is being worked on. Uh, that's in beta as of uh, January. And uh, MySQL 8 is in release candidate. And that is also its second release candidate, and it's it's also likely to come out fairly soon. So with MariaDB, it has to go from beta to release candidate, and then GA. Documentation is amazing. I highly recommend you to look at the tracker blog um, because that's important. So one of the important things uh, with regards to compatibility is um, replication, right? You'd like to be able to use a MySQL 5.7 master and get a replica that is running, say, MariaDB 10.2, so you can upgrade. This is how you upgrade in, in production, right? You upgrade a replica or a, or, or a follower or a slave, and then you promote that to becoming the master and, or the leader, and then you keep on upgrading stuff. And um, this is a matrix that is worth looking at, because if you use global transaction IDs in MySQL, this would be a problem. And um, it is definitely easy to migrate to MariaDB server, but it is uh, much harder to migrate from MariaDB server out to MySQL because uh, global transaction IDs are different. So the, so the whole replication packet is actually different. So you can sort of think of this as a Hotel California move. You can check in, but you can never leave unless you dump and restore your data. So one of the interesting things is, um, and here's an example of what global transaction ID variances look, look like, right? So you've got things like the global transaction. So global transaction IDs are IDs that are unique for every transaction across your entire topology. And both MySQL and MariaDB have them, but you'll realize that they're not actually compatible in terms of syntax. So MariaDB will parse this syntax and convert or throw away things. MySQL doesn't care about MariaDB, so it does not parse the syntax. It'll just say, I can't attach to this slave. It doesn't work. There are also other subtle changes, like the binary log format in MariaDB is now mixed mode, whereas the safest is actually to be using uh, row-based replication, so row mode as opposed to statement. So mixed mode is, by default, it is statement unless the transaction is deemed to be um, problematic, then it would go to row-based. Also, this as a default is something you probably want to change because when you get a statement-based rep uh, replication in your binary log, you can actually look at the statement, copy, execute, and you can see what's wrong with your statement. But if there is, um, if it converts the binary, uh, the row-based mode, then it actually looks like all binary. And of course, you can copy and paste that into MySQL, and it should execute. But you can't quite see it. So there is a way to actually annotate with a statement on the top. But this also ends up increasing the size of your binary log. Time delay replication um, came to MariaDB 10.2, but was also present in MySQL 5.6. So that, that's a good um, you know, four-year delay in terms of actually getting that feature. This is kind of neat contributed by Alibaba, which allows you, it's, it's still, I consider, kind of alpha-ish, but you can actually roll back your tables or instances to a, a state in time based on snapshots and little hackery in the binary log. And Alibaba uses this quite often in your cloud when people say, oh, I accidentally dropped that, like I need to get it back again. So this, this is actually quite cool. And it's initially written against MySQL, but was ported to MariaDB first, so this is actually a fairly useful feature. Also, streaming binary log backups um, is another way to uh, provision new replicas. And uh, this is also new to MariaDB, but has been in MySQL since like 5.6. So, what else is MariaDB only? Table elimination. If you end up spending time with um, database people, they may talk to you about anchor modeling where you may be able to derive answers to queries without ever having to touch all the tables. If you have um, 
fairly well, um, maybe like third or fourth normal um, database design for your schema. MariaDB actually has table elimination for since 5.1. Um, so this is um, something that's kind of useful. It's an underrated feature. It's only present in, uh, say, SQL Server from Microsoft and possibly even Oracle, but it's completely missing in the MySQL world. It's also worth noting that ARIA is the default storage engine for temporary tables. So you have to, by default, configure ARIA. Otherwise, people will realize performance is poor. Here's another interesting compatibility issue. Um, error numbers. So if you get error 1901 in MariaDB, and you, and you, type, and you type P error 1901 with the MariaDB P error, you'll get a different error code return. If you type it with the MySQL P error, you'll get a different error code return. Because everything after 1900 is not compatible. So this makes Googling much harder. So, and this also means that you should not mix your client libraries with your server libraries. Microseconds came to MariaDB first, so up to six decimal points. However, um, the MySQL 5.6 format was actually better and, and faster, so MariaDB did change it as well. So what you have in 5.5, so the 5.5 data set, if you, if you end up using microseconds, does need to get upgraded if you switch to 10.2. So, because it got, switched, it got changed in 10.1. So this is again an on-disk format change, which is also kind of problematic. I like this feature a lot, pro pro process list for progress reporting. Very handy. Here's an example. It'll tell you um, what stage it's happening in, and what kind of progress it is, it is having, and how much memory that one query is using. So I like this a lot. Um, MySQL chose not to put this in the information schema, so you don't get it from the information schema process list. MySQL, MySQL tells you you can get it from something called the performance schema. And uh, I don't put that here, but the performance schema is another way to get access to data. And that's also a, a much newer thing. Again, as I, I mentioned, it's well worth looking at the documentation as well. But the documentation is fast, right? It misses out things, so it tells you things like, hey, um, it doesn't say that it's shipping an old version of performance schema. The performance schema today is the 5.6 performance schema. It doesn't have those 5.7 features. It doesn't tell you it doesn't have the InnoDB memcached library, which allows you to actually have persistent memcached for put and get operations. It doesn't tell you that it, it's missing the Shard 36 password plugin or password validation and so forth. So there are missing things in the documentation as well, which I guess I hope that blog post and this presentation sort of covers. JSON. JSON is also different. So everybody loves JSON nowadays. And um, in MySQL 5.7, there is actually a data type, a binary data type, um, for fast querying of JSON data. MariaDB decided not to implement it because it would violate the SQL standard. And um, they've implemented it, but there are no benchmarks to show if it's as fast or not fast, and so forth. So uh, again, check out these JIRAs. The X protocol, extremely useful. How many times do you hear people saying, I hate SQL, I'd like to query this database with JavaScript, or I'd like to query this database with Python? Now, frankly, I've known SQL for a long time. I find these people insane, but um, you know, MongoDB is really popular, right? Um, the X protocol allows you to connect on a different port to the MySQL server, 33060, and it'll allow you to change your um, using the MySQL SH, the shell, allow you to change, uh, instead of querying SQL, you can query with JavaScript, you can query with Python, and they can extend languages as and when you feel like it. Now the X protocol is a plugin to MySQL. It is not compatible with MariaDB. There is going to be no plans to make this happen. And the X protocol and the MySQL shell allows you to also configure um, the router, as well as other utilities, to create an InnoDB cluster. So I, I, I don't think even in these slides I mentioned the MySQL InnoDB cluster. So it's like a DB cluster with InnoDB as a backing, backing store. And it makes use of things like group replication. All of that is completely missing in MariaDB. And this, this is actually kind of useful for, from a MySQL standpoint. Encryption. Uh, I did talk about this a little bit earlier as well. Uh, 
So far, the Meridium implementation is much better, largely because it is, it is the implementation <coughs> Google uses internally. Google contributed the code, and it allows you to do full table space encryption, as well as um, all your log files can be encrypted as well. But there are caveats. For one, because Meridium is integrated Galera cluster, the Gcash is still not encrypted. And uh, MySQL binary log, if you have a replication problem, it cannot decrypt the binary log files as well. And this is, these are problems that Oracle will have to solve with uh, MySQL 8. And they have actually made great strides in making that happen as well with 8. So if you download 804 RC, you may actually get to see that the whole table space as well as uh, log file encryption thing starts working. So maybe not so important here, um, Chinese, Japanese, Korean language support. Um, Ngram and MediaLab support is missing from uh, MariaDB. Uh, this is something that's been present inside of MySQL. But this one is actually the most important, especially if you if you in, chi in China, because GB18030 is the <coughs> national standard, and this is like crucial to get the database running inside of Chinese places. So if you like, if you, if you think this, if you think China is important, I suggest voting for this issue. <coughs> So the performance schema is fairly complex, and uh, there is something called a sys schema that allows you to query the performance schema without being fairly complex. Uh, well worth uh, looking at. Um, all, of course, also the performance schema is from 5.6, not 5.7, which means it's missing a lot of cool features. And in MariaDB, the performance schema is turned off by default. You want to turn this on, because you can't turn this on at runtime. So if you have a problem and your developer has a problem, you can't tell them, hey, let's restart the server because then you have a whole buffer pool. Security. MySQL has been, uh, you know, MySQL authentication, MySQL native password is basically double SHA-1 since 4.1. Uh, and um, nowadays, of course, we know SHA-1 is no longer considered as secure as it was in 2001. And uh, neither is double SHA-1. So, um, MySQL has had an answer since 5.6 to have a SHA-256 password plugin. And MariaDB has chosen the ed25519 uh, password plugin, which is uh, based on Daniel Bernstein's um, OpenSSH implementation as well. So, needless to say, uh, whatever, you whatever user tables you create with uh, SHA-256 will not work with ed25519 and vice versa. So, if you've created users with, in MySQL, they're not gonna, yeah, they're gonna have to reset their passwords in MariaDB and vice versa if these plugins are you, gonna be used. Validate password is on by default in My, MySQL 5.7. This means you don't get uh, weak passwords. So you cannot use a password like ABC12345 hash. You can in MariaDB, unless you turn on the, the, the other password plugin. SSL is really important because when you replicate, everything is in plain text. If you are going to use the cloud, which pretty much everybody does nowadays, you're replicating in plain text, which is why SSL needs to be turned on by default. And this is true for 5.7. It's got pre-generated keys. As long as the client says dash SSL uh, mode equals on, you're good to go. With MariaDB, you still have to actually turn it on, generate the keys, etc., And it, it's not as easy as you'd expect. Yeah, the libraries are changing as well. So, you know, Yazl is going out of fashion. Everybody's going to be linking against OpenSSL in 8.0. So there are other bits as well that are missing. Uh, I talked about automatic failovers earlier, and super read-only is extremely important for automatic failover, because if you're doing an automatic failover and the, one, the super user, which is one extra connection, is allowed to make changes, you can have inconsistent data sets. So super read only is, is very important. Optimizer trace is surprisingly also missing from the documentation, but this is very useful for you because you want to see what the optimizer is doing and trace it. Uh, MySQL had this since 5.6, so this, this one's a useful feature. Let's um, you know, skip installation, starting up. So in 5.7, you actually have to grab for a temporary password. So it's not, it's not the most friendly. Um, with MariaDB, you don't have to do that. You just type dash u root, it'll work. There are user table changes. So if you are writing tools that automate um, deployments, 5.7 and um, MariaDB have a different MySQL user table. So the password has an authentication string matter. So if your scripts are tied to MySQL user password or MySQL user authentication string, 
your scripts are going to break, password expiry. So this, I, I get really annoyed when I'm told every 90 days I need to change my password. But uh, it turns out uh, that's like policy that you need to follow from um, vague security standards maybe. Um, password expiry is not available in MariaDB. It is available inside of MySQL. Also, um, knowing the last changed password, the lifetime, setting a 180 day or whatever lifetime thing again in MySQL. The ability to lock and unlock an account. So you have someone who you know, decides to leave the company in a half. You can lock the account immediately. You don't have to delete your stuff. And uh, this other SQL function is also missing. Quick example of password expiry and, and not. Optimizer hints, like optimizer is like a whole big, big topic. That's also um, missing in um, MariaDB. These G GeoJSON and GeoHash functions at the moment also missing, even in the current 10.3. Tools are starting to diverge. Like tools support by default MySQL, they don't support MariaDB necessarily. So you can't get easy SSL set up, you can't use things like MySQL pump. Um, extra backup wouldn't work at one stage, so MariaDB forked for going extra backup to make MariaDB backup. Uh, all these tools for automatic failover, router and stuff, things that come out of Oracle or maybe even third parties, they may not necessarily support MariaDB's GTID. They'll support MySQL's GTID first. And Vitesse is a great example of that. Vitesse is a Google project. Vitesse.io and I think they're going to donate to the Cloud Native Compute Foundation as well. Um, they allow you to have a proxy in front of your MySQL instances, and Vitesse is what powers YouTube. So every time you go to YouTube, you're, you, you know, you're getting Vitesse. So, and uh, they only support up to uh, MariaDB 10, but they also offer 5.6 and 5.7 support. So they're not testing against newer releases. Contributions. Spider is the most uh, interesting thing I think that will come to 10.3 when 10.3 is GA because it allows you to um, shard in SQL. And uh, it's, it's taken a long time to get in, but it, it did finally get in. But then I think there's also important things like having you know, dead code, like handler socket is not used anymore because everyone uses InnoDB memcached, but MariaDB doesn't have that at the moment, so handler socket is still being shipped. But the security model for handle socket is weak, so it needs to be dropped. So Procona dropped handle socket as well in 5.7 because it's just old. So here's a list of stuff. Um, so one thing you, you learn about software engineering is, is that if you cherry pick mergers, you're probably going to miss stuff. And most of these are actually all, all, all found in the last month. And they're all sort of ways things are either working slower and they're or, or not working at all because of the merge error. Hmm. This is probably going to get worse <clears throat> as Oracle keeps on changing InnoDB further. Because Oracle is putting development into it, but if you're trying to merge and you're just cherry picking mergers, your QA has to be amazing. And you're going to have these problems. There are vast differences uh, with Galera cluster and uh, actually B cluster as well. So again, it's largely around the information schema, performance schema. Uh, monitoring, of course, differs. And the most important thing is this Galera and group replication provide fully synchronous replication. And uh, group replication only works with MySQL and obviously for Kona server, it does not work with MariaDB. So what Oracle is pushing going forward for creating an UDB cluster or creating fully synchronous application is, is different from what MariaDB is going to push. So you're going to have a choice when you use the MySQL branch to have Galera or group replication, but you're going to have only one option in the MariaDB world. I think testing and QA really matters. So this is an example where something should actually work, but actually doesn't work. And it was just completely missed. Uh, also, when you do mergers and you introduce extra F syncs without noticing, that's also bad because every time you call F sync, it's really expensive. So I know this is a CentOS gathering, but I, I had to take this snapshot out of Debian because um, RPMs don't have interactivity like this. Um, the Debian people already tell you that it has enhanced features which don't exist, which is not necessarily true. It may not exist or it may already exist. 
and it may not necessarily work uh, going back. And uh, usually this means you're going to dump and restore your data as opposed to just you know install something over your old data directory. Plenty of moments of when you want to use MariaDB server, so MyRox, TalkyDB. Um, if you still use MyZM, anybody use MyZM? Care for MyZM? No. The Connect Storage Engine allows you to do um, import data in a ETL fashion to import MongoDB data or uh, connect it to another uh, data source. Threadpool, um, Active Directory. If, if you want window functions today and uh, common table expressions, MariaDB 10.2 has them. MySQL 8 is, is going to get them soon. And uh, in terms of the external so, uh, ecosystem, plenty going on. So MySQL is far from dead, but not necessarily all of this will actually work with um, all distributions. So I think, um, in conclusion, think about the innovation you're getting today. Uh, you always want freedom from, from vendor independence. You want to ensure you're not getting locked in. You want to ensure you're well supported. And today, you can already look at the stuff, right? So MySQL 8 has got roles, common table expressions, window functions, histograms, all, all these things MariaDB has had for a little while maybe. And um, now it's at the release candidate stage, so development is, is, is moved forward. Um, MariaDB server 10.3, which is uh, currently in beta, it aims probably to be less compatible with MySQL, but more compatible with Oracle, because it's going to have this thing called SQL mode equals Oracle that actually allows you to parse maybe 80% of Oracle. So it's got PISQL functionality to some extent. But I guess we all know Oracle is A, more than a parser, and B, um, Postgres has tried this for decades. And it's, it's still hard to get right because Oracle keeps on changing stuff on you. Because they can. So um, Michael Stonebreaker, famous guy in the database world, um, said that um, for Facebook, using MySQL is a fate worse than death. So someone made a t-shirt at Facebook. And uh, I, I think it's not true because, yes, it's 20 over years of history. And, uh, but it, as long as you, you know the ecosystem, you have wide and varied solutions. And we're starting to see things uh, converge as opposed to diverge, as you know, even forks tend to converge. So um, you know, with that, I realized I put a lot of links there, so the slides will be available. Um, probably Rich will also upload them to the, to the wiki. Um, so the conclusion is, you know, you choose what's right for you, and uh, I think you should ship everything because it's significantly different now that it probably makes sense to ship everything. Um, thank you, and I'm open to questions.